What's up guys, this is Mike Loris with game number two between Absolute Legends now on the Radiant Rocks Kiss on the Dire. If you're watching this just regularly from the ch channel, then, well, I guess I have nothing to say to you other than what I normally do. If you're watching this because you came from game number one, which is currently posted on the Quantic Pro YouTube channel, then welcome to the Mike Loris Gaming Channel. I hope you stick around because there is always going to be content for you. And I guess the first content for you is going to be game number two of this best of three. Game number one, Rock's Kiss took it after Absolute Legends with a re rather weird, well, speaking of weird, <laughs> rather weird support picks, which are, were very Absolute Legends-esque with the uh, Sand King and the Skywrath Mage to support as well. Couldn't really get that much done, and Rock's Kiss just balled way out of control. But this game we're going to see, wow, a very different route of these heroes. Well, first of all, Absolute Legends, Lone Druid, Life Sealer, and Slark which I do confess I have watched a couple of the games for the qualifiers I have seen a couple of games with Slark in them uh, I have not watched any of the set however so I don't know how it's going to play out of course not I would never do that uh, but they do have a lot of damage right off the bat I mean Lone Druid, Life Stealer, and Slark you could all cla you classify pretty much all of these heroes as heroes that can carry a game in different respects of course but they all do have enough right click damage to actually be able to you know actually kill people through just their right clicks and through the items that they get. And combined with that, they will have a decent amount of lane control. I mean, Slark is one of those few damage dealers, uh, melee damage dealers, who could actually hold down a mid lane. Like, try putting an anti mage there, probably won't go too well. Lone Druid, of course, could also go to the hard lane. Life Stealer has been known to solo easy lanes, although usually you do see him in a tri lane capacity. Rock's case, on the other hand, well, they're going to go for Nyx Assassin as well as the Keeper of the Light, so there's nothing too weird about those picks. After having the Gyrocopter, as well as the Bane Band out, that is going to allow some of those top tier heroes, such as the Nyx and Keeper of the Light, to get through the pool. But they're also going to go for an Omni Knight extraordinarily early. And, well, obviously they could have waited for their fifth pick to pick up that Omni Knight. So, clearly the Rock's Kiss side has something up their sleeves that they're actually planning. It could be in retaliation to that Slark, but, I mean, it's... It's kind of a weird pickup to go against Slark because they're both melee, first of all. I mean, the Guardian Angel is definitely going to help against Slark once he pops his invisibility or Shadow Dance. Shadow Dance? Shadow Walk is something else. Shadow Dance is Slark. Uh, Guardian Angel is going to completely counter off all of his damage. And I guess whoever gets pounced, I'm not sure if you can repel them out of the tether leash thing. I think you might be able to. In which case, Omni Knight will be a decent support hero. But uh, Roxkis just picking up three support heroes right off the bat would probably mean they're going to put Nyx Assassin into a mid roll. I don't see them putting Omni Knight anywhere else. When we do usually see Omni Knight, I know that EG as well as Navi have uh, been toying around with the Omni Knight a little bit in the past, uh, not so much recently. But it has mostly been a safe, a safe lane supporter, very, very heavy on the pushing. And that was before the uh, pull changes were uh, were in place. So. Pulling creeps to the easy camps of the dire side, were, that was a lot easier to do. It was very possible. And I've seen Puppy, and I don't know. I don't. I know it was Puppy on Navi. I don't remember who it was on EG, but I know that they ran the Omnite in that way, in a successful fashion. But in this case, I'm not sure what they're planning on doing. They possibly would suspect the Slark going mid, in which case the Omnite might not have the worst time in the mid lane in a one v one duel. I mean, Slark could try to go on your Omni, just repel and run, or purify, and then Slark, all of a sudden, his low HP pool is looking even lower. But it is a very peculiar pickup from Rock's Kiss. They're going to be looking for some heavy damage dealers with their final two picks, whereas Absolute Legends, they're going to be looking for a couple Ten support heroes remaining. with their final picks. Take a quick look at the bands. I spent way too much time harping on that Five Omni Knight pick. We do see the Tinker, Darkseer, as well as the Tree and Protector. I heard a lot of uh, rumbling around the Tree and Protector on uh, our Dota 2. But uh, I have not yet to see him play it effectively in any of these games. Hopefully we will see that in the uh, upcoming games. Definitely not this one. But yeah, Absolute Legends are going to make sure to ban out those controly type heroes from Rock's Kiss. Not necessarily heroes that would do a lot of damage. So I guess Rock's Kiss are going to be completely okay with giving Rock's Kiss their pick of the carries. But really, Life Stealers in the pool on the AL side. Lone Druid, same thing. And Gyrocopters banned out by AL. Really, there's no more carry heroes that you really have to fear. There's no other... I mean, yes, Luna J Luna is dangerous. Anti-Mage can be dangerous. Faces Void could, you know, really push in hard. And especially when all of them have Repel from Omni Knight. But really, Life Stealer, Lone Druid, and Gyrocopter, those are three, the three real core carry heroes that really are problematic because of their early game power. 
Lone Druid has that bear. He's so hard to kill. Life Stealer is very, very potent in aggressive tri lanes, which we may see from Absolute Legends. We may not. Uh, and the Gyrocopter, of course, has that Rocket Barrage, so he too is also very effective in those uh, in those tri lanes in the in the early game. When you compare those types of heroes to the likes of the Anti Mage, to the likes of the Faceless Void, and those other types of heroes who are picked up to carry, you don't really have to change your game game plan that much. You don't have to account for that X factor that is the low level carry hero who, although you may think, hey, this hero isn't really that much of a threat because he's a carry, you are going to be wrong because he has open wounds, and open wounds is extremely potent, especially when combined with the support choice of AL, which is going to be the Lena. So we'll have that combo up. I'm thinking Life Stealer and Lena most likely going to be partnering together with the, well, Rubik Shadow Demon Band. So, I don't know. It could be another Sand King. I don't know if that would be the best for them. But, yeah, Roxy is actually going to go with the Lycan. So I think that is definitely going to be their safe lane farmer. Don't really imagine them prioritizing anyone else in that role. So far, Roxy is actually super, super melee heavy. And that's, I mean, ALs, they're decently melee heavy as well. But Life Stealer, Slark, and Lone Druid. Lone Druid, I guess, is a range here, technically. But he's very, very melee-esque. But he has the, he's a, he's a range hero, technically. But he is kind of melee. So I guess it's just Life Stealer and Slark then. But even so, Life Stealer and Slark, even though they are melee, they have the lane control of a ranged hero, which is something that Nick Sesson kind of has with his spells. But Omni Knight and Lycan Throw really struggle to actually keep on their targets with until Lycan Throw, of course, gets to his level six. Uh, maybe Omni Knight will pick up a point of the uh, of the slow. The what is it called? Even I completely forgot. Degen Aura. It's such a bad skill. I always forget what it's called. I'm just kidding, it's not a bad skill, but it is not as good as Repel, so stop getting it over Repel. And it's gonna be Enigma as well as the Juggernaut for Roxka, so going for even more of this healing, Roxk is going for a mass healing strategy at this point, AL probably kicking themselves that they have not picked up an Ancient Apparition. Their pick instead is going to be Enigma, so it might be a safe lane farmer uh, of the Lifestealer and just to put Unicorn on the Lone Druid up into that top lane, or an aggressive uh, jungle from Enigma. I guess he doesn't really have much to fear from the Roxk support cast, and uh, well, I think he should be fine to do that. I mean, Impale is definitely dangerous, Spin is definitely dangerous, but if Biz doesn't go to the top lane, then it's really Enigma doesn't have anything to fear, just because Impale isn't really deadly enough to warrant Enigma completely leaving the lane. And hell, if he gets one single po uh, point of the Eidolons, then you know, make sure he actually casts that. Those Eidolons alone will mess up anyone from Roxkiss who wants to harass him, because he's seconds. ranged. I mean, he and Re Lina are going to have such an easy time in this lane, because Keeper of the Light Five seconds. is really Maybe. the only hero who could actually poke back the Absolute Legend side, and that's another weakness of picking up the Omni Knight as a support hero. Like, well, it is going to be played by Solo, so we might not be seeing that exactly, but yeah, Omni Knight as a support hero, if you try to play him as a, su as a support, then he's unable to actually poke in. It's going to be a very similar situation to what we saw from Absolute Legends in the last game, where they had the Sand King who couldn't really do much of anything. So we're going to get this game underway. Let's see. Oh, wait, right. First, uh, right off the bat, I am using a different monitor. Uh, right now, I had to move after the casting that game number one. So if anything looks a little bit different, then uh, if, any, if I miss anything or press the wrong buttons, or whatever, I'm also using a different keyboard, then that is why. So, Absolute Legends, it's going to be Mania going to be playing that Life Sealer Miggle. It's going to be playing that Slark with a pretty cool fishy frill hawk on his head. We have on the bot lane, it's going to be Unicorn on the Lone Druid. Rise is going to be playing that Enigma, and that, of course, leaves the last one, Miracle, on the Lena. It looks like Rise prepping to go to the jungle, so it might just be dual lanes coming out from AL, or I guess like a solo lane Unicorn with the Enigma in the jungle on the, the Rock's Kiss side. Solo is going to be on the Omni Knight, and he looks like he's going to go for the mid lane roll as that Omni Knight, exactly what I was talking about before, him versus Slark, should be a, a matchup that favors the Omni Knight, although how often do you really see that? I have no way of knowing who's going to win in that engagement. Yol, supporting as the Nick Assassin, Biz is perfect, and playing Juggernaut with a pretty kick-ass Helm. Dread is going to be on the Lycanthrope, and Vangscore is the last one on that Keeper Light with a pretty cool hat. So we're going to see how these lanes shape up for the Rock's Kiss side. It looks like for now, they're going to be laning an aggressive tri-lane versus this lone druid. They should be able to do quite a number on him. The problem is, again, however, that Yol is the only setup that they have in order to get a spin-off. And if they do manage to magically get a spin-off, if they do keep this tri-lane, of course, we'll see where Biz wants to go. Yeah, he's going to stick around. If they do uh, want to get a kill on this lone druid, they definitely do have enough damage. I mean, if they could get a full spin on him, then well, that lone druid is as that lone druid is as good as dead. But the problem is that you only have an impale, and impale is going to be what level two at the max when he's when the lone druid's still in like kill range. 
that's not enough stun duration to actually ensure that the Juggernaut has enough movement speed to stick on his target, especially since he hasn't opened for boots, which is standard. But Lone Druid with the 315, move, 315 movement speed is going to be absolutely fine to handle this lane, especially if he does this, the trademarked Lone Druid pulling of the Creep Wave. Top lane, Mania, Rise, and Miracle going to go for an extremely aggressive level 1 push. They demolished the Creep Wave using those lesser Eidolons. Level 1 only is all you really need. That is going to force the uh, Lycanthrope of Dread to go into the jungle. So he's going to be getting a little bit of farm clearing off those easy camps. He has a lot of regeneration pooled to him by Viol as well as Vangscor. The uh, Calling Blade and Stout Shield is enough to keep him afloat during that. But he's going to have to worry about a couple heroes moving up to this top lane. Vangscor does have his Illuminate. Yol has, I'm assuming, is going to be Impale. But still, AL going turbo aggressive without a ring of Basilius. That takes balls, man. That takes real big balls. They're going to run into Vang score. Illuminate's going to be charged up, but that's pretty much it. Miracle going to get stunned up, but really they can't do that much to kill off this Lina. Tower still taking a good amount of damage, and it will be brought down eventually. Not quite yet. Miracle going to take a couple more tower shots before he gets out of that range. But really, just with one easy, easy push, AL almost taking a tower before the two minute mark. I'm pretty sure that was a compendium thing, so I really hope they go for it. So we, I, I'm pretty sure I put that, I don't I don't know, I have honestly no idea, but I'm sure someone's gonna be really pushing for AL to get that because hell, people wanna get right that uh, compendium prediction right, even though no one really knows what they're for. Dread, now with the support of Vangscore and Yol, has moved up to the safe lane, so he is going to be farming relatively easily. However, he does have to worry about the LSA from Lina, as well as the follow-up from Ryze. Maybe he doesn't have to worry about the follow-up from Ryze. Ryze is abandoned ship. He's going to go into the jungle, just try to get his farm on. After that, I guess that was kind of unsuccessful. Ryze would have wanted to take down this tower. If he did get the last hit, that would have been his soul ring guaranteed. But now he's just going to be uh, forced to slum it and just go for the Sage's Mask, as well as the four clarities that he picked up for himself before. So... It's going to be a 3v2 lane on this top lane, and Eel's Mania probably not going to get too much, I assume. Although, once again, these melee heroes, Yol and Vangscore, really don't have much crowd control to kill off Mania. And even if they did, Rage would have been up there, and just now picking up a point of the Open Moons. Let's take a look at the final lane, where we do have Miggle on the Slark, who's actually gone for two points in Essence Shift. That means he wants to go for more of the sustained, uh, more of the sustained fight rather than the bursty fight. You can see he's going to put, put the uh, leash onto Solo, but instantly the repel guess that uh, we all learned something today. Repel does, in fact, dispel that leech top lane. I'm going to miss first blood. I saw his health pool dropping, but, uh, oh, God, I miss first blood. What a great showing. Welcome to the channel, guys. If anyone's coming here, you get to watch me miss first blood. But I guess you could assume what happened. Really, the supporting cast from Rock's Kiss unable to do anything to protect Dread from these uh, types of occurrences. That was just with two heroes as well. We do have Yo way too far away, and Dread getting a little bit too close as Miracle going to land that LSA, and well, the damage from Mania getting quite a few right clicks, Dread, really, you're just, there's no way to support this guy if you are the Keeper of Light, if you are the next assassin. I guess you could try to throw out a stun, but at that point, the stuns, the all the spells were already thrown from the AL side. So, yeah, it's going to be First Blood going the way of Miracle. It's going to give him enough gold to fly the courier by his boots of speed as well. In the meantime, mid lane solo getting jumped, and I'm just missing kills left and right. I did catch the last one, but hell, this is why I need someone to, like, cast with me and slap me and say, hey, you're missing stuff right here, because I really did not expect Omni Knight to die. I guess he was cut out without a little bit of mana, and, well, that constant pounce harassment does add up in the end. Rise coming in with two points in Malthus. Really doing the damage there. Honestly, did not expect a kill off on the Omni Knight anytime soon. Just, if he managed his mana correctly, he should not have died, but I guess I must have missed that. But you can see the damage does stack up quite a bit. Anyway, what I was saying about Miggle with his skill build, you do have the Essence Shift, which ordinarily... I mean, if you look at any guide, you would say it's picked up at, uh, you have one level early on, just so if you get into an early game slugfest, you will end up coming on top, getting a little bit more damage out of that. But uh, he knows that the Omni Knight is going to pretty much survive anything that Miggle throws at him, unless he receives support, which is exactly what we saw before. This time, Solo is going to take a little bit more damage, but Slark has gone for the bottle, so he is going to be able to harass and trade really, really evenly with the Omni Knight. Top lane is going to be another kill attempt onto Yol this time. Open Wounds as well as LSA has already been used. He's on the run. He should die. He's going to turn around for an Impale attempt on the Mania, which is going to land, but Vangscore is actually going to run straight into Lina. LSA going to land as well. Mania closing the distance does not have enough mana for an Open Wounds, so Vangscore is going to walk free unless it has not even enough mana for the Lina. So Vangscore is going to get out of here alive, but Yol is going to be another casualty on this deadly dual lane of AL. Really rocks because don't have as much presence that they, as they would really like in order to shut down Mania's farm. He's still getting the farm. In fact, he's the most gold per minute. In the meantime, the mid lane, another attempt going onto the Rock's Kiss solo mid. Wow, they're just uh, 
so much aggression from AL bouncing up between the mid and its hop lanes. It's hard to keep track of all of it, but I will give it my best. So, yeah, I am going to finish my point about Slark. Essence Shift ensures that uh, the attribute loss of Solo is really what's hurting him. That means less base damage, it means less intelligence for him to actually cast off his spells, and that means over the long run, AL's Miggle is going to be winning those trades. And not in the short run, he's not going to burst them down, he's not going to go for any Dark Pact, in fact, knowing that the only stun from Rox Kiss is the Keeper of the Light Impale, and really that's not something you need to be worried about. So, he's going for the smart thing, he's going to win the long run uh, engagements versus Solo, going to choke him of mana, choke him of, of that right click damage, and then really just hold on to the lane that way. He's almost at his level 6, so any harassment that the Omni Knight, ooh, that the Omni Knight throws at him will not stick. We can see the nice deny from Dread, but in the meantime, top lane has been dropped. The uh, tower was only at, what, like 190 HP? Mania as well as Miracle doing a very, very easy job in order to ensure that they did take out the tower. And Mania, even with the Balls of Steel, going to continue pushing down the top lane. He might have to worry about Solo, though, rotating up to this top lane. Omni Knight is not the ver most offensive hero, and Dread does not have his level 6 just yet. However, Dread might be in a little bit of trouble. Miracle going to come in, land the LSA. Does Mania have enough to kill off Dread? He should if he just infest bombs right now. Do it, do it, do it. There you go. Impale is going to hit onto Mania, and he does worry about the Omni Knight. Mania is going to be fine, though. He has the phase boots. In the meantime, Miracle is going to salve up and just run away. Mania going to juke out that Illuminate and will be completely fine to just walk straight on home. 4-0 is the score right now and Rock's Kiss not looking so good. Last game they completely dominated pretty much every single moment of the uh, of the other game. But this time Absolute Legends, their dual lane on top lane is working surprisingly well for them and at the same time Miggle doing a very good job to shut down Solo. I mean he'll, they do have even CS but you can just tell with the uh, presence of Rise in this middle lane that Miggle is really winning these uh, damage trades. The one death from Solo also not really helping out, but you know Slark has this power over Solo that really Solo could try to defend against, but now the Purification is down, he's going to be forced to pop off that Repel. Mega with the Shadow Dance. It's going to be a lot deadlier to the Omni Knight because Omni Knight is reliant on his mana pool. He's reliant on his cooldowns, whereas Miggle, I mean, that Shadow Dance has a very low cooldown. He just has to slip out of range for, like, what, 10 seconds? He should be at full HP. Especially if they have the bottle, but they might even look towards Solo yet again. He does have a repel. He's going to cast it once more. They might want to chase this one down. They're going to leap in, look for Bang Score, perhaps, but no. He's going to decide against it. Shadow Dance will keep him safe. And possibly go for Bang Score once again. No. This fish is being such a nuisance. A miracle. Going to run into Yol, but looks like they don't really care about one another. Well, did Yol even see him? I feel like he should have saw him. He definitely did not act like it. And look at this pressure that Miggle is putting onto this mid lane. These two supports are terrified right now. As well, they sh well that was not exactly why they should be terrified. Miggle now is going to wish he had a point in the dark pack. We do have a black hole onto Solo. He's the Enigma trying to go Solo versus this Omni. In the meantime, the Slark does kill off the Nyxassin with the help of Miracle. But now Miracle completely surrounded. Might even be creep blocked. No, will not be creep blocked, but is going to die regardless. Let's see if Dread can take this last right click. He should be able to. One more slap. And in the meantime, Miggle going to assassinate the Keeper of the Light. Miracle still on the run. Is going to burst down the wolves, and he's going to survive. Dread now on the run. Purification not available. The Repel is not going to keep him alive through this right click. Miggle getting so many stat points from the Essence Shift. The Infest not going to kill off the Omni, but it will be the LSA that does it. And AL keep everyone alive. I have no idea how. In the meantime, bottom lane Unicorn being attempted by Biz. But wow, Miracle, that should not have happened. He was just at a sliver of HP, and the Wolves from Omni from the Lycanthrope with that uh, with that health nerf were not tanky enough to survive the Onslaught. That is a simple 3-2 combo with Dragon Slave, LSA. And wow, everyone from AL walks out of that. You can see the power of Slark just getting so much time to attack things with the Essence Shift that really, oh, beautifully played by Miggle. Going to dispel the, well, not too beautifully played. Going to run straight into Bang Scores Illuminate. No, he's going to dodge that one. Miggle getting so much damage. Was that like, what, plus 100 something? He had so much freaking agility just by hitting things throughout that entire fight. And all the Wild Roxas, of course, were losing stats. But, you know, Miggle getting a couple of kills there. He's now sitting at 302. So he's just farming up a storm. Really, everyone from AL is farming up a storm, with the exception of Mania. But even even then, Mania has yet to die. Whereas the supports from Roxas, one death, two deaths, definitely not too bad. But Mania just playing. A superb defensive game from the Lena, keeping herself alive, but also an offensive game, setting up the kills 
for her teammates. I mean, 204, Mania is doing incredibly well on the Selena. Let's take a look at this bottom lane where we have kind of been ignoring 36 for 6 on the Juggernaut. And if I click on Unicorn, you can see what he has. 45 for 13. So Lone Druid, as expected, is a little bit ahead of the Juggernaut. But with the healing ward, Juggernaut should be able to survive. It's really difficult. Well, maybe not. Biz might be in a little bit of trouble. The, boot, the base boots are up on the Spirit Bear. And he does have another Tangle available. Let's see if he can land it. Biz is going to die. He's going to try to bottle up through this. But he's going to Omni Slash the last attempt. But the bear actually going to drop. And now here comes support from Yol. Unicorn biting off a little bit more than he can chew. Unable to kill off the, uh, uh, the Juggernaut. His bottle delivery from the Crow coming in just in the nick of time. And the Omni Slash as well. Just with that additional moments of that invulnerability means that the Juggernaut is going to turn it around for a kill. Really a much needed kill for the entirety of Rock's kids. Yol is going to break level 6 from that one as well. So really experienced the Nyx Assassin desperately needed. However, well, Niggle once again going to miss a pounce. Going to run straight into Yol. He is going to perhaps realize that he's here. Oh no, two men in that impale. Man, Miracle in a ton of trouble. He's going to drop solo to the Nyx Assassin. Miggle going to pop the haste and You cannot catch up to this. Mania is here to help out. However, Yol going to get latched up and he's going to pop this Spike Carapace, but it's not going to be enough. Slark with the damage is going to kill off one. Going to look for another into Dread, possibly. Maybe even solo. The damage on Dread is really stacking up. He's going to go for the easy target in Fang Score. Going to burn down in a minute. And now Dread on the run. Is he losing stats from... Yes, he is losing stats even through GA. Nothing can save you except for the repel. The damage is there. There's the pounce to finalize the death of the Lycanthrope. And somehow Mania is the one picking up all these kills. 304 on him. 503 on the Slark. And Rock's Kiss with their kind of... Uh, well, definitely strange picks, I would say. Not really working out for them. I feel like they have too much melee at this point, and they don't really have enough stun. I mean, I, you, do, you could make the argument that Life Stealer is on the other end, Slark is on the other end, so even if they did have stun, it wouldn't help them out too much. But still, AL, they're just having every single opportunity to just walk over Rock's Kiss every single fight. And I guess Rock's Kiss can continue doing this. Purification, Bomb into Mania, Illuminate flying through, Life Stealer annihilated. And you know what? You know what set that up? the stun from Yol. If the stun wasn't there, you could bet that Mania would still be alive and kicking. He has finished up his armlet, however, so he's not really going to be worried about that too much. He has not lost too much gold. Reliable gold, it is 70, so I don't think he even lost any gold from that one. So, yeah, we do have AL in a surprisingly good position at this stage in the game. I mean, Roxas, they do have a very late-game-centric lineup. Rise now, he didn't get spun down, could turn around for Black Hole. Well, not anymore. He's out of mana. Now Miracle in a little bit of trouble. Omni Slash, one, two, three, is going to kill off Lena. The LSA does latch onto Biz as well as Yol. Not going to be enough to help her out. Miggle still on the chase for Solo. Four points in Repel, keeping him alive. Once again, do not level up your Degen or on Omni Knight in your pub games until later on. Repel is such a good spell. Please stop joining my games, picking Omni Knight, and then leveling up Degen Aura. I really hate it when people do that. I mean, I guess Repel used to be really expensive, and that's why any skill build thing you see will recommend you get Repel, but don't do that anymore. It's bad. But yeah, AL in a very good position this uh, thus far into the game, almost at a 10,000 ex uh, gold advantage, experience advantage with Rock's Kiss, picking up a couple of those kills, going to turn it around just a little bit, but now they have to worry about this, and Vest Bomb, Invisible Slark, oh, maybe they don't have to worry about it anymore, Miggle, going to lose his Shadow Dance, even going to be attacked by a range creep, so they know that the Slark is here, however, Rock's Kiss do not know that the Life Sealer is here in Dread. It's going to be a big surprise for him when he finds this one out. Let's see, Slark, who's he going to go for? Possibly he's going to look for Vangscor. That's the easiest target. And he has spotted him. Vangscor, you are so dead, my friend. Illuminate's going to fly through. Not do too much damage at all. Solo now has his wounds open. Going to be forced to repel himself, but that's not going to help him for the right click, especially when there's a black hole there to lock him down. Bear, right on top of Yol, going to try to teleport out of this. There's the entangle. No, no entangle. Actually, it's going to be the Malthus that cancels off that TP, and Miggle finds himself a double kill. This is going to be the tier 2 tower as well in Rock's Kiss. So early on, 13 minutes in, they're on the ropes. Biz gonna get lashed up. Is there a spin? There's not. Where's your spin, bro? He's gonna pop the healing guard and he should be just fine, but still, so much damage. Miggle's gonna stack up this agility for himself. But they've already taken down the tier 2 tower and AL. They want more. We have teleportations going down to the bottom lane where, with the rotation following suit as well. This tier 2 tower is not long for life. In the meantime, Miggle keeping his top tier 1 tower alive and well you don't want to have this tower take any damage at all. Miggle actually going to go for that fusal blade so he's going to look to purge people through that repel and really just try to get to the nice nougaty center that is the underside of the rocks kiss heroes. Repel or not. So Slark going to continue to farm that one up is doing very well in the gold per minute chart. Mania actually doing a little bit better despite being at the uh, 2v3 lane for the entirety of the game. 317 is uh, one of the few AL heroes with a death, I guess. Well, actually, 
He's more in the rather average area of that category, but either way, Life Stealer still farming up an absolute storm and Rocks Kiss really their carries aren't getting enough. Dread just now finishing his Vlads, but that was a Vlad's rush. He got nothing except for a bottle in between that the Vlads in between uh, you know his starting items and the Vlads. And it's 14 minutes in. That is in itself a very slow Vlads, but for death, I mean it you can't really blame him. He's been constantly pressured. Miggle's been on his ass the entirety the entire game. And well now he can finally go for Roshan, but I don't know if a level 8 Lycanthrope can kill Roshan without at least the healing ward from the jug. That would be more than enough to do it. If they did manage to sneak Biz as well as Dread into that Roshan pit. They could snag it, which would give them some much needed experience in gold. But uh, I don't know if they could do that within the uh, under the eye of AL. We do see another Nax Bomb being locked and loaded up. Going to quickly scout the Roshan. Are they going to breach this high ground? Well, Roxkiss do have some vision up on here. And there is a Sentry Ward, so that is going to tell them that the Shadow Dance is, well, not available for Slark, so they're going to know that there is a ward available, and Miracle going to do his duty as a support hero and make sure to clear that one out. You can see the pressure that Miggle is putting onto Roxas just by himself. I mean, Roxas did see a couple heroes behind him. They saw the bear, they saw the Lina, but still, they're so freaking scared right now. Vangscore, he's got to do his duty, get on the front lines of the Keeper of Light, but he's only level 4. Where supports on the AL side, level 7 on the Lina, level 10 on the Enigma, not really a support hero, but you know, really kind of playing like one. AL going for this greedy lineup, and they're making it work. Now, they go on the front lines, does still have Mania inside of him. I'm pretty sure Roxy at this point should know about it, but it's not going to make too much of a difference because the tier 2 tower is going down. Biz, got to make sure not to get too careful, but if he does get pounced upon, he should be fine to spin on out of there. That gold is going to give Miggle enough, uh, that tower is going to give Miggle enough gold to buy up his Diffusal Blade which means more damage. Speaking of more damage, it's going to be doubled. The fun, ladies and gentlemen, has been doubled, and now Roshan is the next one to drop. Let's see if Miggle's going to be the one to pick up the Aegis. I feel like, well, really, I mean, Mania, Unicorn, and and Miggle are all really important to keep alive, but they're all so survivable, it's going to be hard. I, I don't really know who's going to pick up the Aegis. Really, it doesn't matter. The differences between all these heroes is really negligible. I guess it's, I, it is smart to put it on the Slark. He's the soft one, when he's not going to be burst down by anyone from the Rocks side anytime soon, but he's holding on to a very, very large kill streak, so you want to preserve that as much as possible. Guess it makes sense. Anyway, AL just continuing their reign of dominance, have cleaned out all of the tier 2 towers 16 minutes into the game, and, well, they have yet to take any damage, really, on any of their own. You can see all the tier 1 towers are extremely healthy. Top 1, not even taking a lick of damage. Bottom 1, just now taking 50 damage. It's not going to bother them too much. At least, I don't think it should bother them too much, unless they're going for the flawless victory, but they've already lost 6 deaths, so it's not going to happen. But, in regardless, they are pretty much putting the screws to Rock's Kiss. They are so far ahead in gold, not so far ahead in experience, However, uh, that gold advantage really translating well with the heroes that AL have. Armlet drums up in the life stealer, drums as well as Diffusal Blade up on Slark. Bottom lane though, we might see Mania bite off a little more. Hit you very very quick rage into a straight TP. Uh, actually, Omni Slash is gonna cancel that off. I did not know that that mini stun goes through their rage unless there, no that definitely went through. Unless Mania decided he could turn around for this, he's gonna definitely regret his decision. However, here comes Miggle. He knows Solo just burned out his spells, and there goes Repel purged off. The Guardian Angel is actually not gonna hit onto Yol. I don't know why. He was definitely in range. What the hell? What? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What just happened? First of all, oh, we got. Well, he got impaled by something. No, no, I, I wanna see this whole thing again. We're gonna watch this again, guys, because we gotta know what happened. That is not what happened. Give me, give me on, give me out of here. Give me to the TP part. TP, TP, TP. Oh yeah, okay. So Omni Slash apparently does. Uh, oh, did I break it? I broke the game. God damn it. Well, okay. Apparently Omni Slash's mini stun does go through. Here comes Miggle, and we're gonna actually slow this one down because I'm pretty sure Yol's in range. Oh, he's just out of range. Oh, that's brutal, Yol is going to not receive the benefits of that Guardian Angel, and I definitely did break the game. I apologize. We're going to be hearing Blade Fury for the entirety of this game. Hopefully it doesn't last for too much longer, because I don't know if there's any way to fix this bug outside of me restarting. It does look incredibly badass, though. Spin to win, taken to a whole nother level. That would be so bugged. That would be so... That would be pretty cool, though. It would be infuriating as hell, just hearing that constant whooshing as you're playing that Juggernaut, but we're not going to have to look at that for too long. We'll try to avoid the Juggernaut so we don't have to listen to that too much. But anyway, the Guardian Angel being popped in in an effort to save the Nyxassin, 
and an assassin was not saved. Meagle, I mean, that was kind of just unfortunate from Rock's Kiss, but at the same time, I feel like Guardian Angel was definitely in range. I mean, it was definitely 600 range. I don't know. I have no clue what happened there. He was definitely in range. I mean, unless the game, unless this new monitor is really messing with me, I'm like 80% sure that he was in range. But it's not going to matter in the end because it, in the end, he all did in fact go down. It's going to be his fifth death. And AL now staked out in front of the Rock's Kiss side. They're looking for some way to get in. It's going to be very, very difficult, even though Guardian Angel is going to be down for another minute. They do still have to go through a lot of Rock's Kiss anti-push, which is mostly in the form of that. Well, still only level 2 Illuminate, so I guess it's not too... Oh, well, Biz does this. It's going to be a very easy pickoff. And now base for AL. Biz is going to get to Black Hold in. LSA to follow up. And he's still spinning. Can you believe it? I certainly cannot. Let's get over here so we can't hear him. Impale going to fly through with Miggle, going to go straight in, going to get the leash onto Yo with Mania inside of him. Purification Bomb is going to bring down Slark, but he does have the Aegis, that's exactly what that was for. Rise coming in as well, looking for a stun onto whoever he could find, but it's not going to happen. Two down from the Rocks his side, and Blinding Light or not, AL's AL, they want blood on this tower, and they are going to get it as well, killing off the Wolves first. Fortification popping off, hopefully when the Juggernaut revives, we'll get rid of this. But the tower is now in danger. Another Illuminate is going to fly through. But, you know, AL, they really don't care. Bear is not going to care too much. And actually, Mania taking a good amount of damage from these wolves. But wolves are going to get ground down really quickly. And with no Nyx, no Juggernaut, that's going to be a Rax down in favor of AL. Goodbye, Rax. And Miggle does have that arm, the uh, the medallion on him. Picked up by the Lycan Throat. And hey, it's gone. Oh my god, we fixed it. Praise the Lord. But melee Rax has been taken by the time everyone from Rock's Kiss gets back up alive. And AL, they get exactly what they came for. They're going to slip on out of there as just as easily as they came in. Biz biting off a little bit more than he could chew. The vision was there for AL. And really, breaching this far out against even just the lone druid. You, you know you can get entangled. You know that the entangle is a threat. He was brave enough to brave the enigma as well as the lone druid. And then eventually the Lena. Uh, you know, the line between uh, bravery and stupidity is a fine one. But uh, he's definitely regretting his decision now, so you don't need to harp on that any longer. That did give AL very, very easy access inside the Rock's Kiss base. Not to say that if the Juggernaut was alive, he could have done anything to really stop it. But at least his presence would have made AL possibly think twice about breaching the high ground. But the way it stands right now, Miggle is still on the hunt. going to look for Yell. He's going to latch him up one more time. There's no way to get through this TP. No basher or anything like that on Miggle, so that's going to be the next assassin slipping away, but Miggle spent nothing for that, and that's another 135 gold for Yolt that really he cannot afford to be spending right now. If they're going to be uh, really doing anything with their money, they need to be buying some pretty big items. But AL just pressuring all over the map, and Rock's Kiss really unable to do really too much about it. I mean, they're trying to make something ha stuff happen, but they need, right now what they need is just a lot of farm and dread. He's nowhere near the farm that he really needs. Neither is the Juggernaut, really. Yasha Drums, 21 minutes into the game, is definitely not enough to compete with the Slark that has Diffusal Blade, Drums, and another 2,300 gold in the bank. Not enough to compete with Manny, who's now completed the Desolator. It's not enough to compete with the Unicorn, who now has the Basher as well as the Armlet on his Spirit Bear. And Biz might be in a little trouble. Where is your spin? He already used it. Lugun, when that Lugun, LSA actually missed, and Biz is actually going to live because of that. Miracle going to chuck out the Laguna Blade, and, well, either way, Juggernaut does get out of there alive, but AL now, they are have their eyes set on this bottom tier, tier 3. They can try to breach the high ground. In the meantime, Slark going to go for Dread immediately. Dread pops his ultimate. Miggle is going to be unable to pick up this kill, most likely, unless he chases it down with Shadow Dance. You do move awful quick as the Slark and Dread, although he has max moon speed, he's going to, well, pounce right over him. I don't think Pounce cancels off TPs or uh, has a stun or anything like that, so don't think it really would have mattered, but either way, the Lycanthrope does get out of there alive. Miggle finding even more farm in this top lane. Could you look for a Basher, even Enigma. Wow, picking up Black King Bar. He's been holding the gem. He's been holding this belt of strength for God knows how long. I don't know why. I guess he's considering getting treads, but really unwilling to pick up that uh, 500 item gold gloves of haste. But uh, yeah, it's going to be him. It's the only one that AL are waiting for. They really do need the Eidolons if they're going to breach another set of high grounds. Or at least wait until this uh, top lane does come through. Unicorn can do a little bit of creep cutting and make sure that that process goes a little bit faster. I don't think Rox because you're going to be caught unawares this time. They're going to be playing incredibly defensive within, their, within the boundaries of their base, not going past these steps. 
So it's really going to be up to AL to make this fight happen and really initiate a pickoff or just go straight for the push. Thanks, Gore. Now with level 3 Illuminate, still not enough to completely bowl down the creep wave, especially with the mech up on Ryzen. Well, AL, they do have Unicorn, so Spirit Bear on the front lines. This bear going to just go to town on the Tower Mania there as well, unable to take any harassment that the Roxas can attempt to put on him. Impale's going to head on to the bear, and actually the damage they're putting on the bear is pretty high with the Medallion on it. Actually, Medallion went on to Mania. Either way, the damage on the bear is awfully high, and now the Tier 3 is in trouble. Top lane's going to be tended to by Dread, and it's actually going to be Miggle. He's going to be backing up this bottom lane. Wants even more farm, because why the hell not? You're a fish, and you need as much farm as you can get. Get some vengeance on those you know, aqua fisheries that everyone puts your kind through. But really, it's going to be farm for everyone on AL. They have complete map control. You can tell by the really only one ward. There's no wards, though, from Rock's Kiss, so I guess one is more than zero, right? So they definitely do have the map control. Still do have all their two ones up. And ordinarily, if Rock's Kiss weren't, in it, weren't being completely dominated right now, I would say that those towers are just bags of gold that Rock's Kiss have yet to cash in. They're those big novelty checks that you see being given out at like tournaments and stuff like that. But unfortunately for them right now, the, those checks are not refundable. There, there's definitely insufficient funds right now. Y'all gonna get initiated upon one more time. Miggle dropping off low. Illuminate will kill him off, actually. The burst damage is enough, but here comes Mani to clean him up. Miggle's gonna tell Miggle's gonna buy back. Does not have a keeper of the light on his side, so he can't be yanked right in. However, Shadow Dance spamming off that pounce. He'll be able to make it to the front lines very, very quickly. He's moving at max moon speed actually with the phase boots on. This Slark is an absolute beast hunter. And he's going to join the fight relatively soon, but Mania, as well as the bear, really, they don't need the, the Slark there anytime soon. Mania going to turn around and man fight Dread. He take a lot of damage on his way out. Bear is also going to make it out alive. And now, with the Slark here, they could look once again to breach this high ground and see if the Roshan is up. I have no idea if Roshan is up, actually. So I'm sure the teams will have the timer in their head, but unfortunately, the Golden Clock is not there for me. Or Illuminate's going to charge through. And Solo, not yet at his mech, which will definitely help him a lot this fight. Miggle. Really still at a low HP pool. He's going to go for a BKB so we could actually breach this base along with Mania. And we're going to see a pause. So for this pause, let's not do anything because the game is going to resume straight away. So AL on the front door of Nox Kiss. Knock, knock, knock. Let's see if Nox Kiss are willing to answer or if AL are just going to have to kick the door open. Looks like it's going to be on the back of this next creep wave. Top lane continuously being pushed because of the melee raxes taken before. Solo might have to deal with this, but the range raxes are always in trouble at this point. Mania going to jump outside of Miggle. Actually does not have the invest for that extra magic damage, nor the escape tool. But with him in that rage form, Bear having so much HP as well. Wow, this melee rax is getting ground down. It is right on the front lines, but Ryze is going to pop the black hole. Catches too. There's no way to interrupt him through that BKB. He's going to stun onto Miggle, but Solo, as well as Biz, both dead. Dread on the front lines. He's going to get beaten down as well. Yo, with the spike carapace up, not going to help him. He's going to get four stabbed out. I think that was a four stab, but he's going to die as well. And that's what? Four down? Rock's Kiss. They're going to call it. AL with the dominating display with their kind of tri carry, and now Biz on the run this is going to be the final blood that AL managed to spill. And that is going to be GG, ladies and gentlemen. AL tie it up 1-1 one one from the TI3 qualifiers. We're going to be seeing who moves on in this as we speed through the rest of it. Rock is no longer fighting. We'll just wait to see if, when uh, this game actually ends. But there it is. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this cast, like, comment, subscribe. If you came from the Quantic Pro channel, I sincerely hope that you enjoyed your stay here. And I hope that you subscribe and continue to stick around because there is always content for you, as I said before. Thanks for watching, guys. GG. GG!